Hi, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm painting a project that I think I'm going to title Fall Back Black. We're supposed to uh, turn our clocks back this weekend and I thought perfect opportunity to do a fall scene, come up with a cute name, work on black and Fall Back Black it popped into my head. So for now that's the working name of this piece. I'm using this photo reference that I took at the Holden Arboretum in Cleveland, which is just a gorgeous place year-round, but I captured all sorts of beautiful uh, fall scenes last year when we had a really lush, gorgeous fall. This year the colors are not as bright, but um, I thank God for photography because I have all sorts of great pics to use from last year. So I'm starting by moving over this tree You'll notice the tree in the photo was almost smack dab in the center. I left it that way when I edited it so that my students uh, that were working on it this week could think about editing themselves. And if you think in terms of the rule of thirds, where you divide your paper into thirds, top and bottom, and sideways, just roughly, I don't measure it, but you could if you're so inclined to that kind of perfectionism, but thinking in terms of drawing a line so that these, that, so that the painting's divided into thirds, nothing should be smack dab in the center. And for dramatic purposes and for a visually pleasing composition, if you think about having the focal point somewhere around actually a crossbar of these thirds, an intersection, um, it usually makes for a, a better composition. Uh, I don't need to have this exactly smack dab on that line, but I'm, I don't want it as close to the center as it is. I think it'll give a little more interest to bring it off center. So that's what I did here. Today I'm working on black canson, and note that I'm working on the smooth side. Um, the side that's made for pastels is actually bumpy. It comes uh, with the bumpy side facing up in a pad of canson, but I, am, I don't like using that bumpy side. I feel like I'm always fighting the bumps. So uh, I flip it over and go for the smooth side. With this black paper, it leaves a beautiful, uh, rich black uh, texture come shining through. We're working on the black because we want immediate drama. And uh, letting that uh, show through, or I should say covering that up, defies the, you know, the purpose. Um, although I have my dark dark, which is the black to begin with, I'm starting with the darkest colors that I have, which are, um, sort of mid-tone, and I'm going with some cools and then building up to the warms. Real light touch, I'm skimming in, I'm leaving, purposely leaving some areas dark. Uh, I am going to come in with the sky, I'm gonna go from, I still work dark to light, skimming in that sky, isn't it pretty? Leaving that light texture, you know, with a light touch, that texture really comes through. And I'm gradiating it, down from the dark to the light, as happens in the horizon. When you look at a sky from the distance, it goes from dark to light as it works down towards uh, the surface of the earth. And I'm going to come back in here a little later with uh, plenty of sky holes and kind of pick it out. But for now, I'm giving myself a little, a little start. Okay, that's that. I'm going to give myself um, a little, uh, this is actually a black I just picked up. I'm giving myself um, uh, the chance to go really, really black. This paper, when you see a real dark black pastel, you'll see this paper is not quite as black, but um, I want this tree trunk to go super dark. Um, there's another tree trunk here I'm going to put in right now. I'm actually, it's straight, but I'm, I'm thinking in terms of tipping it a little bit in towards the painting. So things sort of all keep you in and interested rather than leading you out of the painting. This does go right up and off, and I actually like that. So let's keep that going. And... Coming in with some of the yellows and oranges. So I'm going to start with the going dark to light. So I'm going to come in here 
with some of this dark rust. A little bit in here. Moving quickly to the next color, or value, which is this red it jumps to. Keeping this really soft in general. I don't want to get into a whole lot of detail. I just, my thinking is I want to have fun with color and I want to play with the, the contrast of the black. A little bit of red in there. I see a little bit here. Remember, I'm going dark to light, so although I see a little orange up there, I'm going to give it a little extra oomph by putting in something dark first. So a little of that red. Skipping to the a little rosier red slash orange. I'm going to come in here. It's a little rosy highlight on this shrub. And a little bit here, a little of that lightness. And I'm really taking note of where that light source is. It was behind me and to the left, so it's hitting everything at this angle. And so the flip side of that is the shadows are all on the right-hand side. So I need to keep that in mind throughout, and, and it's real important for consistency in a painting and for making sense of the lighting and the shadows. Um, I did not pick up an orange, and so I'm doing that now. And I'm picking up something that's, rather than a really bright, bright orange, I'm picking up something, this was my rosy color, I need something that's got a little more yellow in it. That's a little bit too intense. I'm going with this. It's a little bit muted. Um, I notice that there's some green some lighter green up under here. I'm gonna put a little more of that in. So almost scumbling, if you know what that is in oil painting. Scumbling is just using a, uh, a brush to just sort of quickly move the paint around and almost, almost scribble. And over that, I can come back with that orange. Really light touch. While this orange looks kind of bright, uh, on this black, it's actually not as bright as it looks. And, and something interesting to take note of when you're working on black is that your colors uh, are really affected by that black. What you think might be a neutral can uh, really pop out with such intense contrast. So therefore, I went with that green first rather than directly onto the black because I don't want anything that bright up high. I don't want to draw attention up there. The focus is right around here but yet there's still color in here, so I'm, I'm skimming over. And the beauty of working like this is that with this light touch, uh, you can really glaze colors over each other, quote unquote glazing, another oil painting term, but um, it's an opportunity. I'm gonna show you what happens when I go straight onto the black. Let's see where I can do it. Right here onto the black. It's too bright combo of color with that orange is what I'm looking for. And again, I'm trying to keep everything really soft because I'm seeing this scene from a distance and um, our eyes don't see everything in sharp focus. They see things in a much blurrier, softer, edged way. So there's that. I'm gonna come back in and uh, hit this with my yellows here. Starting with a little bit of a darker yellow. And I'm cleaning between application. I am cleaning off my pastels and uh, being sure to not put any dirt down onto my painting. A little bit of this here. I see a little bit of the lime green in here, but I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow and work my way into a little bit of the green up in there. A little bit here also. I'm going to come back with this lime green. And I can just touch it lightly, but it's not screaming out lime green. It's screaming out a combination, a layered, a soft layered effect that I think is so pretty in a scene like this. Now in here I have the evergreen tree. And um, what I'm gonna do is come back in 
with a really, well, with a little bit of my black to form the deep, dark shadows inside there. Because it, it's funny, when you, you know that it's black paper, but when you see it against a black black, it's really a soft black and not dark enough for me. I want a little more drama. So there's the black black. I'm coming in with a darker green now over that. And then I'm gonna come back in with a slightly lighter green, still a little bit warm in color, in temperature. And I'm going to add a little bit of this cool green, sort of a green green, but it has a little bit, it's a little bit grayed down. It's not as intense as the grass green, but it's cooler than the greens that I used because the evergreen trees really are uh, cooler in color. I'm looking at one outside my window that's that sort of whitish green. You know, there's so many different shades, but I want to build up to that with the dark and the warmth underneath. And now I'm adding in a little bit of that cool evergreen color. And I'm not trying to be literal. I'm squinting while I'm doing this, cleaning. See the dirt? I'm cleaning the dirt off, swipe with each application. And I'm squinting to see uh, where these darks will remain and, um, and how I can make this look like a, uh, an evergreen without being too literal about every branch. Looking at it in just shadows and light and clumps. So that's good, sort of like that. I'm standing back to take a look. Now I see a little black empty spot in the center right here, smack dab in the center of that tree. But I'm gonna bring a little of that around with my black pastel, soft pastel. I'm using, for the most part, uh, soft pastels. Terry Ludwig's and um, looks like um, some Great American, some Sennelier's. I'm gonna come back and put a little burst of of light on this tree. I want to reestablish the brights on there. I'm going to even come back in with a little swipe of yellow because yellow and red make orange. Harder uh, pressure here to get that orange to really pop a little bit. And a little bit in here goes a little bit deeper. I'm going to come back over that yellowish, that darker yellow, with a little bit of the red and carry some of that down. And making my own orange. All right, I'm going to think about, um, actually, before I move on. I'm going to take a little of this green. This tree is bothering me a little bit. I want to come back in and do some little bit of painting around that tree trunk so whatever's happening behind it continues across. And I'm going to bring this red tree behind here and let that come over. And that just is a trick to define that, uh, that trunk. I'm actually going to take a little bit of purple because purple and yellows and greens are a magic combination. Um, because it could stay just black, but I love color. And so if I can find an opportunity to throw in a little bit of color that's going to give the painting a little bit of um, oomph and a little bit of with a little wow factor, um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, in here, so I have this purple. I'm using more purple. I want to kind of spread that love around. I'm going with a muted. These are both muted. That's not as intense a purple as it could be. Switching to a slightly more muted one, and I'm going to be going over the weed area down here underneath the yellow shrub, and um, just sort of skim in a little of that. I want to bring some of that 
around that purple. And I'm, I'm almost seeing it as a little purple. I'm gonna bring a little of that down in here in the reflection in the pond here. And I'm gonna start bringing some of the colors from above down into the pond. A little of that green. This is a fairly, you know, sort of a mid-tone to dark green and it's showing up nicely on that black. Switching to the red shrub. It's a little further back from the shore, so it's a little further away from the shoreline. It drops down a little bit. And then coming back with a little bit of the yellow. That's If it's up above, then it's down below reflecting, if it's close enough to the shore. And that yellow shrub here. And I'm softening it with my finger a little bit, uh, just because the reflection um, needs to read as a reflection and not anything that's positive. It needs to read differently than the actual landscape. So I am going to actually come back in here too with a little of this yellow. Let's see if I can use this yellow. No, I'm going to switch to a slightly, slightly lighter yellow. I'm going for something in comparison. You can see what I had for that yellow. I'm picking up a light yellow, which I realized I need as a, a highlight on the shrub anyway. So let's make some marks and bring out that light. It's a yellow shrub, just like the red that has sort of an orange highlight. This yellow shrub is being hit by the light and, um, and that light's lightening it up a lot. There's a little sort of scum across this water. and a little bit of growth, leaves, whatever it might be, along the edge. And I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna create a a horizon line. I'm creating the edge along this swampy pond, the edge of the land mass that's here. I'm even going to run a little bit black up into the vegetation. And I'm coming back in here and I'm going to darken up a little bit to create a little, a little bit more in the way of um, capturing the dark reflections. That's a little too dark. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of a darker purple. And I'm just creating some ripples. I'm actually trying to create a surface of the water. And by running a few lines just through everything and keeping these edges of the shapes in the water soft, um, you can uh, create a feel of you know, the surf of water, so you can see the surface of it. Okay, I'm gonna stand back and see what I have here. Okay, I'm grabbing a, a slightly harder pastel, just kind of a neutral yellow color, to get in a little bit of the details in here. And I'm, I, you know, it's easier to do with a hard pastel than with a soft pastel to create some lines and a little bit of texture. I'm coming back in with a, a little more a firmer touch to get a little more of that orange in. And I'm about ready to come back in. Oh, I missed this whole section over here. Let's do this. Get some interesting color in there. Um, I'm gonna take a sponge, a clean little artist's makeup sponge, and I'm gonna soften the edge up here a little bit. 
I'm also going to take my finger and just dull that down a little bit. I want to create a little bit of distance and uh, blurring that edge where trees meet the sky uh, builds in uh, some distance. The soft edge just creates the illusion of, uh, of distance. We can't always see things sharper in sharper focus the closer we are to them. Widening that tree a little, and I think I may even just put in another narrow tree trunk. All right, I'm going to come back in now. All right, I think that's going to be the end of part one. Come back for a short part two as I wrap this up. Thanks for watching. This has been fun.